Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday, June 20th, 2017. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the information from the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. We continue to track uh, our two systems in the Atlantic here, uh, what did become a tropical storm, Brett, as it uh, came east southeast of Trinidad, moved through last night into the southeast Caribbean Sea, and has actually today degenerated back into an open wave as of the 5 p.m. NHC final advisory. This brought uh, heavy rain and gusty winds from the windward south to Trinidad, Tobago, and the northeastern coast of Venezuela, and some showers and gusty winds could affect the southern islands of the southeast Caribbean throughout the next day or so, uh, but the system will continue to degenerate as it moves into very high shear in the Caribbean, as you can see the southerly flow over it in the milky white cirrus, and the strong trade winds below that. Uh, very high shear here, and the system will dissipate over the next day or so as it heads toward the west-northwest. The big story continues to be what is now Tropical Storm Cindy. This is formal, former Invest 93L and potential Tropical Cyclone 3, which did indeed develop into a Tropical Cyclone Cindy here. And if we take a closer look at that now, uh, you'll see that it has a defined circulation now after days of really kind of milling around in the Caribbean with not much to say for a circulation. It now has one that you can clearly identify spinning here, but we continue to have this very lopsided look. We have a lot of shear out of the southwest, and you'll see all of the, this convection and rainfall taking that kind of comma shape to the east and north of the system's center, and you can see how far reaching and wide uh, the impact of the system is. We have rain all the way from the Florida Panhandle over into Louisiana impacting the coast, and a lot more rain is coming down, especially in this area of the central Gulf Coast over the next couple of days and life-threatening flooding is becoming a primary threat with the system as uh, rain has fallen in this area already in prior weeks this spring and uh, there is worry for flooding here due to more rain from Cindy up to a foot and isolated higher amounts expected over the next couple of days. You can see Cindy is not moving very fast. It is going to take a couple of days still to get toward the northwest expected to make landfall somewhere near the Texas-Louisiana border right now sometime early on Thursday. If we look at the water vapor imagery here, you'll see again the southwesterly flow that you can kind of make out in the Gulf of Mexico around this upper low spinning away near the Texas coast here. And this is again pushing all of the thunderstorm activity off toward mainly the northeast of where the center of the system is. And you can kind of, uh, kind of akin this a little bit to a baroclinic type interaction where we have this, this upper low over the Texas coast, a mid-level low here, so it's tilted to the northwest with height, and then our surface low here over the central gulf. And so there's kind of a mutual baroclinic interaction going on here. This isn't so much a cold front here as it is a boundary between dry air to the west and very moist air to the east coming out of the Caribbean. And uh, so this kind of reminds you of a bit of a frontal system with the the frontal structure here. Now what can happen with this again continuing with the frontal analogy is that as this system begins to move toward the northwest it begins to interact more closely with this upper low near the Texas coast and as the two get closer together the system center will migrate uh, farther and farther away from this moisture belt coming out of the Caribbean and will eventually seclude, if you will, uh, sort of like occlusion in a true baroclinic low over here and uh, will become a little more separated from some of the moisture flow to its east. And if this were to have more time over the Gulf, that kind of process can eventually lead to more intensification as a more classic looking tropical system that is more symmetric because eventually this thing would stack underneath the upper low, shear would diminish, and convection would eventually redevelop over the center of the system as dry air is mixed out. However, that usually takes a couple of days to occur, and considering that Cindy only has at maximum about 48 hours, it appears right now, before moving on shore, it likely will not have time to take advantage of that process. Let's take a look back at the water vapor imagery. We'll talk quickly about the steering uh, for Cindy here. We have this big ridge over the west, and we've had a lot of uncertainty until this point with Cindy's path, given that we've had very weak steering currents near the Gulf Coast with another ridge to the east over the western Atlantic, and what happens in the middle here has been very uncertain. This ridge is nosing in over Texas and the Ozarks here, and so Cindy is kind of feeling that along with this mid-level low to its west, which is helping to tug it 
toward the northwest today and tomorrow, but then eventually this new trough that's coming in over the Pacific Northwest that you can barely see here will start flattening out this ridge, and eventually the, the ridge will be suppressed to the west just enough that Cindy will be able to sort of uh, just mosey northward here toward uh, eastern Texas and western Louisiana and kind of get in between the two ridges to its west and east. And that is a slow process, but something that is uh, fairly well forecast by the models now with a fairly close agreement compared to past days. And uh, Cindy is likely to come in in this general area of the coastline here. Again, impacts very far and wide from the system center. So this whole portion of the North Gulf Coast is getting all sorts of rain and perhaps life-threatening flooding, regardless of the exact point of Cindy's landfall. As the system is likely to get a little bit, little bit more symmetric as it comes toward the coast, we may even see some tropical storm force winds wrap around to the west and northwestern side of the system as it nears the coast. So there may be a small area of tropical storm force winds even just west of landfall here. And we do have a tropical storm warning extending from just southwest of Galveston Bay toward the northeast. And we can see that on the track forecast here in blue showing these warnings from uh, southwest of Galveston Bay all the way up to the Louisiana Mississippi border. And again, sometime early Tuesday here, this is the 1 a.m. or sorry, early Thursday for landfall. This is the 1 a.m. Thursday point. And between 1 a.m. and 1 p.m. Thursday here, they have the storm coming ashore and then moving northeast over land and dissipating all the while still bringing tons of rain near and east of the center this entire time. So flooding a huge concern with a maximum rainfalls expected near eastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and southern Alabama with over 10 inches expected in places and isolated amounts to a foot or more are possible. So river flooding, inland flooding, definitely a concern here. Definitely the biggest impact of Cindy. Gusty winds are sure coming, uh, but this isn't going to be intensifying with any earnestness as it comes toward the coast. And in fact, fairly steady state intensity is expected currently with winds of about 45, 50 miles an hour. That's probably what it will have throughout the remainder of its life cycle before moving on shore. Uh, so that's what we're expecting from Cindy right now. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.